Welcome back to NRM 638, Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to start working with creating GIS data, working with creating tables and table fields, and then creating rows and field values. So if you go to the Blackboard website, Go to the Python scripts menu and then week four creating GIS data and download this week four tables.txt text file. And what you'll be doing is copying and pasting the ArcPy commands from that text file into your ArcMap Python window. Okay, there's three basic steps to create tables or point line polygon feature classes. And the first thing is we'll create a table or a feature class, then we'll add fields, and then we'll basically edit our new table or new feature class, adding records and field values. So let's make a test geo database to output to. So I'll put mine in this folder. So I right mouse click, new file geo database, and you could call it whatever you want. I'll call this my geo database. Okay, so the first step is we'll set our ArcPy environment workspace to your geo database. So I copy from my text file, and then I go to my Python window, and then I'll paste this geo database into my Python window. And then we'll set a variable called UpPath equal to that geo database. And then we'll create our new empty test table. So our test table will be located in our geo database. So if we look at it under properties, it has no fields. It just has object ID, which ArcGIS creates automatically for record keeping. So the second step will be to create fields in this new empty table. So we create three fields. So our first field will be ID, it will be short integer. Our next field we'll call date time, and that will be a date type field. And our last field will be value, and that will hold quantities. It'll be a double precision field. So if we look at open our test table, it now has a field of ID, date, time, and value, but it has no records and it has no field values. So our third step will be to fill in our table with records and field values. But before we do that, we're going to create a second table and we'll use the first table's schema or fields as a template. So basically we'll create our second table and it will automatically get all the fields from our first table when it's created. So this is the template is our test table. So now if we look at Test table two, it inherited all the fields that were in test table one. The function inside ArcPy data access is insert cursor. So insert cursor is very similar to editing a table. Basically what it's going to do is open the table and allow us to insert uh, records and field values. So the syntax is insert cursor the table we want to open to edit, and then a list of fields that we want to edit. So in this case, we're only going to edit the field called ID, and then basically that will open the table and allow us to edit the field ID. So we'll make a list called row, and it will contain one item in our list, and that will be the value 100, which ultimately will be our ID. And this edit rows object is a cursor, and it has a function to insert row, which basically inserts uh, new values into your fields, and it has a property fields, which returns what fields are right now being edited. So right now, the only field that's being edited is our ID field, and it returns it as a Unicode text in this tuple. So we'll insert our first row in our table. So basically what that did was it inserted ID value of 100 into our table. 
And we could loop through and insert many rows in our table. So from our text file, I'll copy and paste this loop. So for ID in a range 101 to 111, that will be a one item list, and then we'll insert that into our table. So then I press return, and it executes that loop. So it inserted those 10 new rows into our table, where the ID is gonna be 101, 102, 103, et cetera, all the way up to 110. Okay, so when we're all done, we can't really look at our table until we close it so it's unlocked. So what we'll do is delete edit rows, which basically throws away our cursor, so it saves our edits and unlocks our table. So then we could look at our table, and we were working on test table two. So we'll have to add it to our data frame one more time. So I'll remove it and then add it to our data frame. So now we have the ID was the only field that we were working with when we created our data access insert cursor. Okay, if you want to work with all the fields for a table, you would use the wildcard asterisk. So we'll, we'll edit our test table, create a cursor called edit rows. So basically it's data access insert cursor, the name of the table we want to work with, and then an asterisk, which is a wild card. So that says all the fields. So then if we type in edit rows dot fields, so now we've got access to object ID, ID, date, time, and value. So we'll have to fill in the values for these fields. So let's execute this loop to see what we would fill in as our table records. So I'll copy it, control C, or edit copy, and then control V to paste, or right mouse click, paste, and then I'll just press enter to execute that loop. So that's what's going to be output to our table, is our object IDs will be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Our IDs will be 101 to 105. Our dates will be February 17th, 2014, 4pm to 8pm. And then our values will be 4.33 to 8.33, just as an example. So then we'll actually execute the same loop and output to our table this information. So it's going to be our row is equal to a list containing the appropriate values for our four fields. And then take our cursor dot insert row and then this list. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and then finally we're all done, so then we'll unlock our table so we could look at it. So delete edit rows. And we'll look at the results, so we'll drag test table into our data frame and then open it. So indeed it has the object IDs 1 through 5, ID 101 to 105, our date, time, and our value. So that was from this loop. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got a quiz question for you that will lead you to the next video session, which is on creating point feature classes.